from your outstanding experiences as an international professional, I've met you as a dream mentor who never failed to ask me the toughest but right questions. Now I'm really happy because I get to um, turn the whole thing around and tap your brain. And I'd like to begin by asking you, is knowledge power? Hmm. Well, as a matter of first, uh, thank you for inviting me for this interview and good to see you again after such a long time. Is knowledge power? This is a very complex point and uh, there is no yes and no answer. But it's interesting to look back in history. I mean, this word, this aphorism, is 400, more than 400 years old and comes from a British philosopher, as you may know, Francis Bacon, who 1590 somewhat created this uh, word. And uh, at those days, if you see the available knowledge 400 years back, with a duplication of knowledge every hundred years. This was quite a statement of uh, value and, and meaning. Now another very interesting point in history is from 1870, something like that, when the German Social Democratic uh, Party was founded uh, and one of the founders was uh, Wilhelm Liebknecht and he quoted Bacon to make his point that the working class has to get access to knowledge so they can gain political power. I think very interesting. Now, today is knowledge power. Um, I'm not talking about brain surgery and I'm not talking about landing on Mars. But uh, I see knowledge today uh, no longer as power but as a commodity as something that is available on arm's reach, that is available easily to everybody. What does knowledge do from, from the idea? Knowledge answers W questions. Who, where, when, why, how. And uh, knowledge is consisting of facts and information. Now, what are we doing today if we have those W questions and neither our parents nor school nor university has told us the answer. Everybody knows it today, it goes into the internet and Googles for the answer. So the, the, the knowledge is available in a box called a computer called mm -hmm. internet. I mean, what, what a life for Einstein. Einstein is quoted that he said, why should I memorize my telephone number if I can look it up in a phone book. So <laughs> going with Einstein, why should I memorize anything if I can Google for it? So um, knowledge became, a, as I said, a commodity. knowledge became a basic good, like water, like sugar, like, in, in German we say Grundnahrungsmittel. I don't know how you translate that into English. Fair enough. So if knowledge is not power, what is power then? Well, again, power as knowledge needs a definition. Power is something different for everybody. Uh, for me, as you know me, for me is power the possibility to make a difference, the possibility to make a change, to have an impact. Mm -hmm. Different people have different meanings of life and for me the meaning of life is to be able to make changes, to be able to influence, to be able to make a difference. If I can make a difference, I have the feeling I have power. As a student of economics, I have been infused with the idea that it is all about the answers and the solutions. Have I got it all wrong then? Well, if you can Google for the answers, if you can find your answers to the W questions uh, in the net, uh, the answers are easily available. What has changed in our complex world is to ask the right questions. So uh, uh, once you have the right question, you can find the answer, but if you have the wrong question, of course you get the wrong answer. So. Uh, what I do and what I try to achieve is to push young people 
to go more for the question than for the answer. I'm no longer impressed by uh, young folks coming with a lot of knowledge because this knowledge is nothing, nothing changing. But if they have the, but I'm impressed by young people who ask the right question and getting from there to the right knowledge and uh, getting the right tool then to translate that into power. So the questions and not the answers count. Is knowledge worthless then? Well, no. As a toolbox, uh, it creates value by being used in the right craft. Knowledge creates power if it's transformed into action. Mm -hmm. So to know something is worth nothing as long as it doesn't serve a purpose, does not create change, does not make an impact. And let me compare it to a hammer. It belongs into the hands of a skilled handyman. Knowledge belongs into the brains of professionals. And professionals are driven by a mission. Whom do they serve? What, who, who does benefit from what they are doing? They are driven by a vision. What do I want to look like 10 years from now, 15 years from now? And hopefully they are driven by a set of the right ethics, this okay. irrevocable values that uh, they strive for and that together, vision, vision, ethics, that can translate knowledge into power. But what am I trying to say? I mean, um, I see the world filled up with accessible knowledge, information, facts, but I see very little impact. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the interest of time, let me, let me take the example of our Earth and, and everybody knows what we did to it the last uh, 50 years or so and everybody knows the passwords, global warming, carbon footprint, uh, you, you name it. We go to blockbusters like an inconvenient truth. We have all, all the knowledge and you know sometimes I dream that my little grandson is working me and sees this screwed up world and says, Grandpa, did you know that? And we have to say yes, we, we, we knew everything. But uh, as long as we don't uh, transform what we know into change, knowledge is worthless. That's, that's, that's my point. And, and uh, staying with this example, we need I think we need a different set of ethics and our knowledge will change the situation. But as long as this is not uh, combined, as long as knowledge and ethics doesn't meet, I'm not very enthusiastic that we will change the, anything about our world. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um, living in this world which you correctly describe as broken and shattered and shaking our heads at our so-called leaders who have been failing, doesn't this show us that knowledge in the, in the hands of a set of intellectual leaders is not enough? Don't we have to turn towards an, a new set of people, a new set of minds, the young, the, the men and women, and the unsung heroes of our time? Well, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what motivates me to work with young people. But I'm not uh, uh, providing knowledge. I, I don't know a lot about what I, a lot of facts for what I'm about to achieve, but I foster the young people to be critical, ask it critical questions, ask the right questions, and once they have the right question, I mean, talking with Forrest Gump, the right answers are in a box of chocolate. That's, that's, that's not the problem. The problem is to really get to the right uh, question and, 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 and with the available information and with the available knowledge, then you can transform that into power. And then going back to your basic question, is knowledge power? Yes, if you transform it. Mm -hmm. By the way, what you can see the last years in many countries around the world makes me very optimistic uh, about the young generation. They are standing up now, they are asking the right questions and they are working with a completely new tool. And this is this fantastic information network we have today. 
Francis Bacon did not have that. My parents did not have it. Yeah? Uh, Einstein did not have it, but now it's available, everybody is using it. And with this tool, I think I have a lot of hope regarding your question that the young generation will use the knowledge but make change. So, to summarize, in my thinking, knowledge is no longer power, but knowledge is a necessary tool for making a difference if, and that's the critical path, if knowledge is transformed into power by the passion of people. And that's where my hope is with the young generation. So I hope I could add a little piece to your puzzle you try to put together in your conference in London. I wish you good luck and it was so good to see you again. <laughs>